Right. Well, the thing about Buddhism is it uh, it changed wherever it went anywhere, right? So, uh, for instance, it got to Japan, and then we had the kami, who were the kind of nature protectors, and then they all converted to Buddhism. And so Japanese Buddhism has that. In Tibet, we have the protector deities, uh, etc. So, so Buddhism, by its nature, always changed. And of course, yeah, gets here, gets to California, uh, uh, it's going to change. You know, I remember Lama Yeshe in his book, Introduction to Tantra. He also, he wrote about how, wow, Buddhist Tantra is great for Westerners because it gives instant results. And yeah, so uh, uh, so we have Buddhism that changes. I, I've often thought about Buddhism uh, really using the analogy of Buddha as doctor, that Buddhism is just a collection of therapeutic methods, uh, mental and physical and spiritual, for the different sorts of people. And there's so many different sorts of people. So, uh, and Buddha, of course, taught sometimes there was a self, sometimes there wasn't a self. Depends who you are. So, yes, in one sense, uh, Buddhism is deeply skeptical. You have the Heart Sutra, which is uh, at the uh, probably the most chanted and repeated sutra there is in Buddhism, which is the most skeptical thing imaginable. There's no ear, there's no eye, there's no suffering, there's no origin of suffering, there's no attainment, there's even no non attainment. Okay, you're playing with me, aren't you, Buddha? Um, so in that sense, deeply skeptical. And, and you know, generally we uh, think of skepticism as coming from Greek philosophy, uh, from Pyro and Pyronian skepticism. But it's interesting. Uh, uh, and also Hume, David Hume, the great uh, philosopher. It's interesting how both Pyro and Hume had deep connections with the Buddhists. Pyro went, went to India with Alexander the Great. And Hume, when he was in his 20s, he went to this little town, La Fleche, uh, in, uh, in France, where there were uh, Buddhists there, Jesuits, who had been in Siam. And maybe he crossed paths also with the uh, Jesuit uh, who translated Tsongkhapa's uh, Lam Rim Chenmo, Great Stages of the Path, into Latin. So, so all, so all of this, you know, skepticism. The, the thing is about Buddhism, that on the one hand it's skeptical. Um, know this, know that, and the Madhyamakas, uh, in their philosophy, they they won't give a thesis. Just like Socrates, what they'll do is they'll undermine everybody else's thesis, which gives rise to this great opening when we get away from conceptuality and our own ideas and biases. It's a way of getting some wiggle room. But uh, on the other hand, uh, Buddhism is a religion. Buddha also taught ethics uh, and, and karma. So... We have in Buddhism a conundrum which reflects re reflects life, and how could it not, right? Is life totally logical, Scott? It doesn't make any sense, right? So, so if so, if you had a really good doctor who wanted to help you understand life, part of it wouldn't be strictly logical. And that's why in the uh, the last of the four reliances, rely is rely on wisdom, not conceptuality, not just ideas. So yes, Buddha did teach us to be skeptical, um, but even to be skeptical about skepticism. In other words, if you're if you don't like dogma, then you can't. Be dogmatic about it. But, but you know, look, look, at, 
also, because Buddha was such a savant about life and people, um, he also just didn't take things too far. He was deeply concerned with each person and what they needed, what would help them suffer less or be happier. So thank you, Buddha. <laughs>